Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Revelation chapter 12, what an interesting chapter we have. The church is in heaven. The church has been raptured before the tribulation period. It's a very important thing. We are in heaven. We've been judged at the judgment seat of Christ. We've given our new bodies. We're worshiping God. Only thing that we really don't have yet is the wiping away of the tears, but the tears will come at Revelation 20. So when we break forth into this interesting chapter, chapter 12, it needs to be studied. It needs to be read and it needs to be glorified. Because we will be eyewitnesses of chapter 12. I have never seen the eyewitness of Jesus Christ in any of his ministry. I believe by faith. Paul, the disciples, had. I'm going to witness something in chapter 12 that's going to be extra, out of the ordinary, wonderful, praising God. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. In heaven. That's where I'm going to be. At Revelation chapter 12. I don't know why I was going to say Exodus. A woman clothed with the sun. I don't know. Some things in the Bible I don't know. But I have seen pictures as a Roman Catholic Mary. And I know 100% this is not Mary. And the moon under her feet. And you've seen those pictures of Mary. Standing on the crescent moon of religion. Jesus Christ is never the crescent moon. The moon is the church. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars, and I've seen that picture with Mary. Genesis 37, 9 says Joseph had a dream of 11 stars, and them stars were his brothers. Chapter 12, we're dealing with a woman with 12 stars. We're looking at Israel on the earth during Jacob's trouble. No church. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. I'm not going to say this is Mary giving birth to Jesus Christ a second time. Because some people are going to say that this child she gives birth to is Jesus. And I'm going to say it's not and I'm going to say it is not. Or it is. Because I don't know. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, where we're going to be as Christians. Are you a born-again Bible-believing Christian? This is where you are right now, in heaven. Unless you believe in a false doctrine that, you, you know, you go through the tribulation. But then you're lost. A lost man goes through the tribulation. Saved men don't. And when a saved man gets raptured, now he's in heaven. So here we are. And there are two wonders. One to this woman. We'll know who she is when we get there. When Revelation 12 happens. And beheld a great red dragon. You're going to see this. Now we had the beast. We had a lion. 
face of a lion. We had a face of a man. We had a face of a flying eagle. We had a face of a cow. Here's your reptile. Here he is. Job 1 and 2, the Bible says he goes up before God. This dragon, I, 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 I found a great wonder today. I was going to look up, you know, nations that worship dragons. It's worldwide. I just thought it was just China and Japan. But you find Germany had their own dragon. Europe had their own dragon. Central America had their It's worldwide. Worldwide worship of a dragon some way or another. And when I grew up, there was a game of Dungeons and Dragons. And I don't never seen the movies but never read the books but i would probably assume that and i could be wrong harry potter maybe had a dragon in it i don't know but i know there's a song in my parents it was puff the magic dragon and the chinese worship the dragon that could be one of your birth signs of the chinese zodiac and you can usually find some kind of picture if you go to any chinese restaurant in america Here's the great red dragon that is worshipped worldwide. But here he is. He's in heaven where we are. You know what's going to stun some Christians? I may spend a little time on this one. There are going to be Christians who have been not taught the Bible. In the church, saved, born again. And when they're going to be in heaven, they're going to be up there praising God, glory to God. Oh my, what is that? That's Satan. What's he doing here? You never read Job? You never read Revelation? In the eyes of a new body, we will see Satan. Will he be like a dragon? I don't know. This could be the state as we're going to see those four beasts. But he's a reptile. He is of the class of all the dinosaurs that we read about. Dinosaurs are reptiles. That fish symbol that people use for Jesus, that's reptilian. That's reptile. That's Satan. Yeah. There he is. You can't use Jesus as, as a reptile because here he is. He's a great red dragon. Snakes. There was a woman who predicted the future, now going wherever she's going in the afterlife. She used to nestle in bed with a snake. And that snake would charm her. In reality, what God has built into the woman, thanks to Genesis 3, and into me, is the fear of a snake. Snake is a serpent. He's of the reptilian class. Having seven heads. That's interesting. And ten horns. Horns in the Bible are a symbol of strength and honor. Animals with horns duke it out with each other for power or the female or power of their clan of animals, whatever the name is. Two deers with their antlers will battle it out for a doe. And the one with the most powerful horns and the most strength, he's going to win. You say, well, do you really believe this? Go over to China and ask them if they really believe in their dragon. That they prayed up and down in their parades. Go over to India and ask if they believe in their dragon, which they have uh, idols of. But I can't believe a, a Bible in the dragon. The Bible is so out of date that it mentions dragons and unicorns. Well, wait a minute. When I grew up, this big thing came with rainbows and unicorns being pictured on the back windshields of cars you can have them on the back window of your car but you can't be in the bible you're kind of prejudiced i believe there's a red dragon here he is and i believe he's actually worshipped as a red dragon and as dragons to these people satan has come in his identity he didn't come as a man in a red suit with a pitchfork and a long tail oh, wait a minute long tail what's that tail look like doesn't it look like a reptilian kind of clash tail he got horns he got horns having seven heads and ten horns 
and seven crowns. Oh, here's another crown upon his heads. America, let me give you a little information here. If you're going to survive into the tribulation period, you will have no more presidents. In the tribulation, you will have a king. King and kingdom will be in the tribulation period. He's got a crown. Not one president of the United States since George Washington has ever had something on his head to identify him as the leader of this country. So, American governments will change in the future from democracy to royalty, according to the Bible. And his tail, oh, he's got a tail, drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now, who are those stars? Going by what we've already read in Revelation. They're stars. They're stars that are angels. There will be in heaven when we get there. One third of those angels are going to be worshippers of Satan when we get there. And at this moment, he's going to take his third of angels. But see, you know what we got? And this is the thing. I don't know if we're going to be doing two, two nights on this. But this is very important. Let's get the fact that what heaven, we think when we get to heaven, heaven's so wonderful and great. You mean with Satan and one third of the angels there that are his? Is that what you're trying to say? Let me run over here what I read today, see if I can find it real quick. Um, I can't, I won't. Okay, in Psalm 78, 49, this is talking about the children of Israel in Egypt. In Egypt. And he cast upon them fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. You didn't read about that in Exodus. There are evil angels, according to Jude, that are locked up, bounded. And yet there are evil and wicked angels still in heaven worshiping Satan. And there is Satan according to Job 1 and 2. When we get to glorify heaven, we're going to, hey, everything's just wonderful and great. But there is Satan. And he's going to freak out many Christians because they don't read their Bible. They don't have a good church. And they don't know what the Bible says, Job 1, Job 2. Because they think everything's going to be lilies and eating all the time and feasting and coon dogs, whatever you want to believe. But there is Satan right there in heaven when we're going to be there. There he is. You are going to see him. The one that tormented your life. There he is. Let's get real with heaven. There he is. Our adversary, our enemy, and his angels. And he walks in just like he does with Job 1 and 2. Go back and read Job 1 and 2. He walks right up to God. And God speaks to him. How are you with your enemy? That enemy walks right up to God and they both carry a conversation and God starts bragging about his, one of his men. Let's go again. And there appear another wonder in heaven. Where we are. Behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon its... See the Bible, study to show thyself approved unto God. Are you now going to be shocked when you see this, this thing come up to you? No, hey. I heard it on a video. I heard it on audio. My, my, my dad, my, my husband taught our family that we're not going to be shocked. We studied the Bible. And you might be looking at people who are in your church up in heaven and say, Oh my, what is that? You'd be like, didn't you read your Bible? Yeah. Didn't your husband do what he was supposed to do of your family? Yeah. He didn't read the Bible to you guys? You didn't read the Bible? And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Have you noticed how many things from heaven are coming down on earth during the tribulation period? These, these angels are going to, he, to earth from heaven. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, ninth month, right around there. 
for to devour her child as soon it was born. Now let me tell you something. Let me show you something. Here we're going to stop again. This woman is Israel, correct? She's going to have a baby, correct? As soon as this baby's born, this red dragon wants to eat this child. Jewish child to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Do you know somebody else in a religion that claims to drink a, to eat the body of a Jewish man and drink his Jewish blood? Do you know somebody like that? And guess who do you think they follow? Who is interested in eating a Jewish child? According to Revelation 12. There you go. Now, when, when my church and myself, when I take part of the Lord's Supper or the communion, that is not the body of Jesus Christ. That is not Jewish body. That is not Jewish blood. That is a bread of a representation of his body. That is wine, new wine, grape juice, representation of the blood of God. I am not eating Jewish body. But this religious leader that Satan has been through all life wants to eat and drink a Jewish child that's born of a woman. So, and there are a few churches that believe, however they put the word of great long length, that that bread is the body, that drink is the blood. You are following after Satan. Satan is a cannibal. The Bible. That's what it says. And she brought forth a man child. And some say Christ. My Bible says Christ. I don't, I don't think Christ is going to be born again. How's that for a statement? I mean, if you're saying this is going to be Christ born, you would have to be born again and go through childhood again. I don't think so. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now, that's where they get Christ. And Christ is the reign with a rod of iron. I, I don't know. I don't know this passage. And her child was caught up to God. As Christ was caught up to God, Acts chapter 1. And to his throne. So I, I don't know. Are we jumping back to the first advent? I, I don't I don't know. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Who, what's that sound? Who's that woman sound like? Whose history matches what we're reading? Twelve stars. Fled in the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God. And many say that's Sailor Petra. But whatever it is, God has prepared a place. This is a Jewish people. They should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, 42 months. How do you know this is Israel? Moses and Elijah just showed up, didn't they? Who were the 144,000? What were they taking out? Gentiles in the kingdom hall or were they taking out of the tribe of Israel? They're taking out of the tribe of Israel. Moses and Elijah were writers of the Jewish book. They weren't writers of any other book. They didn't, <coughs> they didn't write no books in North America. Had, you know, Jesus, you know, uh, garbage. This is the Jewish remnant. We're going to see that in a minute. So 42 months, the last end of the tribulation period, God has a place for the Jews. And the Antichrist... Satan wants to eat them. And part of their religion will be their sacrifices. If they catch a Jew, they're going to kill him. And they're going to chew his body and drink that blood. That's what the tribulation period is going to be. It's not going to be fee fi fo fum here. You know, it's going to be the real Jewish body. The Jewish people will be killed. We're going to see in a moment. And we'll see scripture to back that up. Beheading. We, we already see souls that were beheaded for the word of God. Jews will have a price on their head as an imitation type of antichrist that you saw in Adolf Hitler. 
but they're not going to make lampshades. They're not going to make pillowcases. Whatever they did with the Jewish bodies, they're not going to. They're going to eat the Jews. Have you not read all the passages where they eat my people as bread? And the children of Israel gave their children over to Molech and burnt them. And then in sieges, oh, oh, Solomon, this woman, she, we ate, her, we ate my baby because of the thing. And and then, no, that's the one. That's the wrong story. That's overlaid a bit. But there was a case where a woman came to the king, and the king said, "What's your problem? Oh, we had, we had both had a baby, and we're in the siege. There's no food, thanks to Elijah. And we ate my baby. We boiled her. And then when it came to the next day, she hid her baby." That's Jewish history in the Jewish Bible. That's coming back. But the Gentiles are going to eat. The world's going to eat. So there's a religious system, not just the Catholics. I'm trying to think of the other name there, and it's not coming to my head. Uh, Lutheranism. Luther is just a little bit shade of the Roman Catholic, but they also believe that bread and that wine is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. That's why we're not Protestants. We don't fall for, for Satan's mess. We don't baptize children. We don't baptize babies. We baptize born-again Bible believers, and we have bread that symbolizes, symbolizes the body of Christ, broken, as I said, our church is wonderful. We give little flakes. And you just think of the flakes of Jesus' skin being ripped, being torn by the nails, by the throne, thorn, by the cat and nine tails, by the fist. And then we have grape juice. And what's the purest thing I could think that would match blood in the Bible to Acts 20, 28, God's blood, is grape juice. You take a grape and... When we had our own personal church in Norwich trying to start a work, we took grapes and we put them in a, in, a, in a juicer. And we had that as the wine. And the Bible calls it new wine. So God is going to prepare a place for Israel. 42 months. Moses lies in 42 months. Now I got a question mark here for 1113. At the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and tenth party city fell. And the earthquake was slain men seven thousand, and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to God of heaven. And what would that glory be? Go, get out of there, because now you're in the great tribulation period. And we'll see. We're going, to, we're going to look at scriptures with these. So the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared for, whether it be Celepicha, there is a place right now prepared for God and Celepicha looks like it's perfect. We could be wrong. That should feed her. What do you think God's going to feed her according to the scriptures? In the wilderness. How about manna? Didn't that already happen? They say in some of Peter right now that there are caverns just ready to supply fresh water. It just got to be filled. A thousand, two, a thousand two hundred and three score days. All right, you ready? I thought there used to be a guy where I lived in London who would always have a sign that said, "No war, but peace." In New London, there was war in heaven now what are you going to do with a lot of Christians in this day who are saved and they don't believe in war they don't think God would, would ever have a war now we got this woman Israel showing up in heaven we got the dragon showing up in heaven now we have a war in heaven and don't you think that's going to cause a ruckus of non reading studying Christians of the Bible We have got a kind of war that people go pay money to watch of Star Wars. We've got God versus Satan. We've got Luke Skywalker. And we've got Darth Vader. 
only thing is Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker and God and Satan, they're not father and son. That's Jesus Christ. Boy, Satan pulled a wool on your eyes on that one. And there was war in heaven. Did you know there was a war in heaven when we get there? Michael, that's the archangel of Israel. The only archangel, as far as we are named. And his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. There's an angelical war going on before our eyes in glory. How's that? You would freak out congregations if you went to a Baptist church today and they open up your Bible to Revelation 12. And let me tell you, four things are going to be in heaven when we get there. They would literally freak out. You would scare them. And yet they go pay 16 bucks to go watch a movie where this is going to happen live and well. And prevailed not. Satan is not going to get the victory. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Nowhere in heaven is Satan the great dragon allowed or going to find a home. How's that? Never. Nowhere. And we're in heaven watching this. And the great dragon was cast out. Michael kicked his butt. Ready? Who is that? The old serpent. Who, who would you go for the Bible for the old serpent? Genesis 3. Call, just in case you didn't get that, in case you didn't study your Bible, in case you don't read your Bible, call the devil. So that old serpent in Genesis 3 is the devil. Any more? And Satan. Now we definitely know who it is. So China worships, worships Satan. Japan worships Satan. India worships Satan. America, Hollywood worships Satan. How can you get any clearer than that? I wonder how many dragons are in Christian homes and through children. When the Bible clearly tells a Christian that is supposed to study his Bible that dragons are the devil, Satan. I wonder how many Christians allow their Christian children to have serpents in their house, which is the devil and Satan. Study serpents in the Bible. There's no good thing about them. I told you. Revelation 12 is fact. It's wonderful. You say, how can it be wonderful what's going on here? You wait. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Oh, the people down at the farmer's market would hear that. How many loud voices have we heard? They say it. The angels have loud voices. They come to me and say I'm screaming with a loud voice on that. I don't know. Uh, listen, I'm not very much. Maybe that's that proves my calling. That God has given me a loud voice. But a loud voice saying in heaven. So here we are in heaven again, right? So we're going to hear this loud voice. In heaven. Get that. In heaven. We are in heaven. This is all happening. Now is come salvation. Well, I'm saved already. And strength. And the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. Ooh. For the accuser of the brethren. Go back to Job 1 and go back to Job 2. When you sin, brother or sister, Satan goes up to God. And Satan goes up there and say, God, Stiley Hayward, yes, what about him? 
That's the fifth red light that he lost his patience with. Such a good Christian he is, isn't he? Satan to God. Stanley Harris, that thought he just had in his head. How's that? Hey, I just saw him get out of bed this morning. He didn't give you no praise. First commandment says think of God all the time. He's out there, you know, witnessing for you, God style. Yes, he is. But you hear what he's saying in his heart about those people of mine? And he will go to God with your name and mention to God to tell God what you are doing wrong. You know, one of the things that God knows about our sins it's not from godly angels. It's not from Jesus Christ. It's not from the Holy Ghost. It's Satan himself going up to the throne, tattling on you. How's that? That's what's wrong with tattling. That's what's wrong with being a busybody. You are taking on the accuser, Satan. The famous words are, guess what, God, I saw. Of our brethren, saved people, our brethren, those that we are now in glory, Satan's been telling on us. And we are looking at him. Is cast down which accused them before our God, our God, my God, my Father, day and night. Satan is busy going up to God and saying, what about that man? What about that man? What about that woman? What about that church? What about that pastor? What about that song? Man? What about him? What about that? What about this what, 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 what Study Job 1 and 2. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Now let's go back to 714. 714. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and has washed their robes and made them white under the blood of the land. This is also talking about the remnant of the Jews. That were already seen in verse uh, 13 of chapter 11. We are joined with the tribulation saints, and even the tribulation saints, and David and all them. Satan is telling on them, Job 1, Job 2. Any man that follows and tries to do right with God before the law, during the law, the Gospels, the Book of Acts, the Church Age, the Tribulation, Satan is busy telling on them. How do we get over those sins that Satan brings to God? You better confess the blood, 1 John 1, 9. And you better do it quick because we don't know how quick Satan brings it to God. And I gave you the illustration of the courtroom. Satan goes up to God. You see Stalin, that sin? He turns to the son. Father, I don't know what sin he's talking about. It, there's blood. He turns back to Satan. I don't know what you're talking about. When I see the blood, I'll pass over him. I see no sin. When I see the blood, I see no sin. Satan goes up to him. What about Stalin, that sin? Son? Ugh, yeah, it's there. Satan's right. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. Three of them. And ye that dwell in them. I'm dwelling in heaven. Aren't we? So rejoice. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. I'm not on the earth. I'm in heaven. And of the sea. Ooh. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath. Because he knoweth he has but a short time, three and a half years. Okay, now, get this. We are in heaven. We see Satan. We see the war between Michael and Satan. And we in heaven who are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ are going to watch Michael kick his butt out of heaven and he'll never ever come back and God's going to speak to us all and say, Rejoice everybody. He's gone can we have a hallelujah can we have an amen can we have a praise me and the son my son for kicking him out of heaven your accuser the brother for kicking him out and i'll tell you one thing 
Thank God you don't live to the tribulation, my bride, Jesus will say, because woe to be to them on the earth. Satan has now come down. And when Satan comes down, he's got three and a half more years left. God says, woe to you. That great tribulation period, the three and a half years ending of the seven years, you better watch out and you better not be on this earth. Satan rules. Oh, brother, you wish you never said that. He just got humiliated amongst all the children of God in heaven and the angels. He's angry. He's a he's a king over the children of pride. I think that's Job. And he's going to take his anger out on everybody on there. And he's going to take his anger out on the Jewish people. Especially. But we're going to be rejoicing in heaven during that time. Because God said he's gone. And we're not even going to give Michael the credit because it's not about Michael, is it? It's about God and his son, Jesus Christ. You, born again, bible believing Christian, are going to watch Satan get his butt kicked out of heaven. How's that? Isn't this, cha this chapter is wonderful. And we are even told when it's going to happen. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out unto the earth, They always picture these video games on that. And he's, you know, he's thrown down on his bag. Uh, he persecuted a woman, Jewish, which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Now, let's go run over to Matthew 24. I think that's 28. we got to see this one. Matthew 24. I believe it's 28. My writing is terrible. Matthew 24, 28. We got to see this one. And it's not 28. Uh, 20? 20. Oh, yeah, 20. I got to learn to write better. Watch this one. Are you ready? Eagle wings. Revelation 12. Watch Matthew 24, 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. They are going to use airplanes to go where they're going. And the law's back because it better not be on the Sabbath day because the airlines will be grounded in Israel. And the winter, you're not going to be able to take the airplanes off if it's snow on the ground or ice. The planes will be grounded. Scripture with Scripture, studying the Bible, the Bible does speak about airplanes. And they're going to carry the remnant of the Jews. With Satan after them. Uh, and you know that's going to be a wonderful, weird picture. Satan's going after them, but the airlines are going to allow them to get on and go. To this place that's prepared in the wilderness. Scripture with Scripture. It's wonderful. The Bible's great. Don't give me any book on a, any five-foot shelf. That, that can't match to the Bible. And we're, we're going to see this. This is going to be witnessed. We will see this fulfilled. And the woman were given to two wings as a great eagle. <laughs> great plane. I always wonder, wouldn't it be funny if those airplanes were called eagles or the company called eagle? You know, the ones that, that carry school children are called uh, Bluebird. Sorry. That she might fly into the wilderness. Matthew 24 20, that's the airplane. Unto her place. So there is a specific place, if it's not still a preacher, somewhere God has already written. And A.D. 96 is the date that they say this is right. I mean, it could be. I don't know. Somewhere, there's a place where airplanes will go with Jews that have been frightened by the second woe. And Satan's going to be kicked out and he's going to chase them. Where she was nourished a time, one. Times, two times. Two plus one is three. 
and half a time. Three and a half times. What do you think that is? That's the great tribulation. We are at the end of the tribulation period. The last three and a half years. So when is Israel going to run? When is Satan going to be kicked out? When is the anger going to happen? At the end of the three and a half years. The last three and a half years. And Jesus called it. And the Bible calls it the great tribulation. The first three and a half years. That's tribulation. Oh brother. You wait till the last three and a half years. And it's sad that there are religions out there teaching that they saved their canned goods and they're going to go through this and they will be rewarded by God later. It's not going to happen. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Now remember I told you Sailor Petra is waiting for hold water? The caverns, that's what the caverns. That water, I watch. A flood after the woman. And he, no, that he, i trying to read my notes here. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Job 40, verse 23. Egypt was drowned in a flood. He wants to drown the Jews. Not going to happen. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth. Numbers 3 6. Where the men that, that gave Moses and Aaron a heart, the earth opened up and swallowed them all up. Isn't it interesting how history is repeating itself? Number three, it's six. The word you're thinking of, sisters. Sisters. That's what I've been thinking of. The earth is going, to, and if this is Celebitra, that earth opening up will be those sisters being filled with the devil's water. If that's the case, God's going to use Satan's water to to give them water. <laughs> And if those sisters, you know what they are? Now get this one. You ready for this one? Are you ready? Because we already know the man is going to be fed again. Do you know what those sisters in that city of St. Peter is made of? It's made of rock and stone. Where would this water come from? Come from the rock. How's that? And in order to have a cistern... Wouldn't that rock would have to be cleft as when Moses saw God? He says, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and I will pass by. Well, how's that? So imagine a Jewish person going on the of Peter. I don't know if they're there yet. Still, finding Bibles all over the place, if they're still there. Opening up their new their old testament, which will have a new testament too, and see this is all right. This is everything we've been taught or should have been taught as our children. And the Holy Spirit reached out to them will open to the last book. Open to the last pages. Let me show you something. Let me show you your modern newspaper, your daily newspaper. Let me show you the last book of the Bible. And you run those cross-references back to the Old Testament. And you run them back to Revelation. You go read Daniel and you read Revelation. Now are they going to do Hebrew? Aha! Scripture for Scripture. They don't believe the New Testament now. But oh, they're going to get it. Somehow. Revelation will be their roadmap. Swallowing up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. In Job 40, 23, it says, he, You think he can swallow up Jordan. And the and the dragon which yeah, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Let's look at chapter 11, verse 13. 
The same hour there was a great earthquake in tenth part of the city, Jerusalem, fell. And the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant. There they are. Those are the ones that feared God and gave him the glory. And God's going to say, get out. Don't you go back and get your shoes. Don't you go back and get your... Move it. Because as you're doing this, Satan's being cast out and he's loaded his mouth with full of water. The raiment of her seed, Jewish seed, which keep the commandments, there's the law of God, and the law, there's the law, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the blood. They must, in order to be saved in the tribulation, be Jewish, they must have the law and the testimony of Jesus Christ. How's that? That's what churches are teaching today. I think, what was it, the Galatian church? That's what the Galatian church were teaching its people. The law and Jesus. They need at the three and a half years of tribulation for God to bring them to the place. They need the law and Jesus. That's not needed during the church age. I believe, and I could be wrong about this. I believe Satan in the tribulation is going to say, just Jesus alone. You don't need to go to that temple. You don't need to bring those guys. You don't need to keep, keep the Ten Commandments. Everybody will come up to you, oh, we keep the Ten Commandments. We do. No, 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 no. That's tribulation. We've already seen the temples there. John saw the physical temple. And <coughs> they took out the measuring rod and started measuring. There it is. They got to bring the sacrifices. What a remarkable chapter 12 is when we are when we are glory. And we are going to see Satan get his butt kicked. Satan's going to lose. So when people say, Satan rules, say, hey, listen, I read the book. No, he don't. No, he don't. And the next great event in Satan's life, not, not the three, three and a half years he's going to, the next great event in Satan's life is when Jesus Christ comes back, grabs his butt, locks his butt up for a thousand years, and then after the thousand years, tosses him off into the lake of fire. He don't lose. I mean, he don't win. And God's going to give his children, those that have Christ, he's going to give Christ's bride a great show watching having us watch Satan get kicked out what a glory what a glory some of our pain sorrows and troubles are caused by Satan see by God by Satan or by our own doing some of one third of our could be Satan and we're gonna watch him go and here he goes and as I said, many Christians don't read their Bible, don't study their Bible. They're going to be shocked when they get to heaven and see this thing. They're going to be shocked there's going to be a war. Then once he's kicked out, for us, it's great. 